Yep. I'm Shalini Oranigiri, I'm a psychiatrist and I'm chair of the Faculty of Addiction Psychiatry at the College. And you're going to tell me about an initiative around addiction that the College is doing. Yeah, so we're really excited about um, our new advocacy campaign at the College. Um, for the next few years, the College of Psychiatrists is focusing on a new campaign looking at alcohol and alcohol consumption and the impacts and interactions with mental health. And so it's a really, um, it's a space for us where we're having an opportunity, I think, to actually drill down on what the impacts are of alcohol use on mental health and also how mental health problems and, and symptoms of distress can actually interrelate with how people might use alcohol as a coping mechanism or a coping strategy. We also really want to be able to start to get the word out there that um, a psychiatrist is someone you can come and talk to if you're having difficulties with alcohol use in your life. And so this is an opportunity for us to actually tell the rest of our membership about this campaign that we're launching this year. Why has psychiatry not really been in that space before and why would, why would people want to go and see a psychiatrist? Yeah, so I think there's a couple of couple of things there. I think um, in the past, I don't think people necessarily have associated with psychiatry with um, a profession that's been the expert in, in alcohol use and, and cutting down alcohol use per se. There's been a whole range of reasons for that, and I think part of the reasons are also that um, the sector in terms of funding has not necessarily focused on alcohol as being its priority. Um, we all know how much burden there is associated with mental illness, broadly speaking, and so you know, you've got things like depression and anxiety that really um, impact on population as a whole and so in terms of resourcing as a sector alcohol has not always been the number one priority there and so I think as a result a lot of um, trainees a lot of doctors who are training in psychiatry and a lot of psychiatrists don't necessarily also see that as the number one priority but I think for lots of us we've um, you know recognized that it, it becomes part of our work it's often um, alcohol use is, is fairly ubiquitous in Australian society it's a, a normalized thing and and I think as an impact um, it actually does interrelate with lots of different things that we actually focus on in our, in our daily practice um, and I think because of that there's also a message that we want to be sending out to the community that if you are seeing a psychiatrist and you're seeing them for things that are not related to alcohol um, it's all worth bringing that up in, in the session about how your alcohol use may or may not be impacting on, on your mental health but also on your well-being in general um, on sleep on exercise routines on your diet um, at, at the college a meeting this this week we've had um, some really great keynotes and, and one of the reflections to myself was a great keynote we had from a professor Felice Jacka on, on nutrition and I think that really you know, highlighted the impact of, of diet on our mental health and our well-being. And a take home from me there is also, also starting to think about how alcohol is also part of our diets and we don't necessarily recognise the impact of that on our mental health and well-being. And what do you expect the first things really for you to focus on? I think in the campaign what we really want to be doing is, is looking at the evidence to start with and making sure we come up with evidence-based kind of messaging around alcohol. We're not um, about trying to come up with some sort of pro prohibitionist message where all alcohol is bad. I think what we're trying to really understand is what is the evidence for what, how alcohol affects mental health and how mental health can affect your alcohol use as well. So we started off with um, an evidence-based sort of literature review of looking at all the existing studies in this area and hopefully in a few months time we'll have a report that we'll be able to release both to our membership but also to the public um, that really distills down that evidence in a, in a digestible fashion. Are you working closely with other sectors on this? We are definitely. We recognise that um, you know, in terms of the alcohol advocacy space it's, it's um, some incredible work out there by lots of our colleagues um, in the public health space as well as in the Royal Culture Physicians and General Practitioners and so we work very closely with them across a range of things but I think um, with this specific campaign we're being um, um, wanting to be really clear around our messaging around mental health specifically and so we are seeing that as, as really an area where we feel we need to, to be able to kind of champion that messaging and have some expertise in that space and so that's going to be our part of, of that message. And with a few days after the federal election, any asks for government? Always ask for government. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, from an addiction psychiatry perspective, I think we've really kind of, you know, want, we'll take any opportunity to kind of, you know, really highlight that this is an area, particularly when we look at alcohol, um, in terms of overwhelming um, burden of evidence that there's um, untreated um, the demand for treatment is, is massive and there's a huge untreated population in terms of being able to access treatment and access treatment early. We know that delay from you know people actually experiencing problems into being able to get successful treatment, that in itself is between 10 to 20 years depending on the substance you're dependent on. So we really want to start and look at how we can reduce that down because we know that if we can intervene a bit more early, we can really help people recover much more successfully. And will you be doing any uh, lobbying to government or uh, in public around the role of industry 
in, in this as a mental health issue, as the alcohol industry? Yeah, I think it's um, early days in the campaign to be able to see what the key priorities will be for us. Um, I think we're going to start from a, you know, an unbiased open landscape in terms of understanding what the key issues are going to be in terms of priorities. Um, I think this is a college-wide um, initiative as well, and that's really important to highlight. It's not just led by our Faculty of Addiction, but um, we're really pleased to see the support across our college. And so we'll be going back to membership and going back to college to see what the key priorities are. And, and part of that is around sort of lobbying government and also lobbying um, against industry influence in this space, and that's what um, one of the outcomes will be. Fantastic. And if people want to keep up to date on it? Yep. Um, certainly the college will be putting stuff up on our website as we progress through the space, so that's probably the best place to look at the landing Great. page. Great. Thanks so much, Shalene.